Hey, you guys, thank you uh, for tuning in today to our live chat. Today, I'm going to be going live on Facebook and on Instagram. So let me just make sure my Instagram is up. Instagram, I'm going to be looking mainly at Facebook because that's my uh, main screen and I'm going to have my subtitles and headings and topics. So if you're seeing this on Instagram and you kind of want to be able to see the questions or topics that I'm putting on the screen, you might want to hop over to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash the feral firm. F as in Frank, A-I-R-E-L-L -L firm. And that will pull up the Facebook Live and you'll be able to interact a little bit um, better. Today I'm gonna to be discussing the issue of custody, specifically as it relates to unmarried fathers in the state of Georgia. Mothers, you should feel free to tune in as well because a lot of the information that I'm gonna share is also gonna be beneficial to you. I will have an upcoming broadcast that's tailored specifically for mothers um, soon. So uh, just stay tuned for that. But now is the time for you to go ahead and text your friends or hit the share button on the live feed so that any friends who may be able to benefit from this will be able to tune in. It's really good to um, tune in live because uh, what you may not know if this is your first time tuning in is that I take the time to answer all of your questions before I end the broadcast. So that's why anybody who needs some answers, uh, they need to tune in so that I can answer those questions. Now, if you um, miss this live broadcast and watch it later, then I will try to go through and answer those questions at a later date. I try to respond to everything. Sometimes I miss them, but the best time to tune in is live. Um, you should also feel free to ask any question as it relates to family law, not just um, custody for fathers today. So if it relates to custody, visitation, child support, divorce, etc., I most certainly don't mind addressing those questions today as well. So before we get started, I want to uh, give you a little information about who I am and what exactly we do here at the Farrell Firm. My name is uh, Attorney Joy Farrell and I am the managing attorney here at the Farrell Firm. And here at the Farrell Firm, our practice is almost exclusively dedicated to the area of family law. Family law consists of legal issues that involve divorce, custody, visitation, child support, adoption, spousal support, and legitimation, just to hit the big areas. We are located um, in Metro Atlanta, right off 285, and we are currently accepting new cases if you happen to be in the market for counsel. Uh, please check out our website at feralfirm.com to learn more about myself, my team, and our firm story. You should also please like and follow our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube page so that we can stay connected with you. Uh, before I get started, I do have to give you um, a disclaimer, disclaimer pursuant to my uh, license to practice law. Uh, by tuning into this broadcast, you acknowledge that the information being given today is based on the laws of the state of Georgia, and you understand that every case is different and unique, and you should seek legal counsel um, to discuss your case specifically. Participation in this broadcast does not create an attorney-client relationship, and it does not create a conflict of interest in the event the person that you are up against in court decides to hire our firm before you do. So let's go ahead and um, get started. Uh, today we're going to be talking about custody, what unmarried fathers need to know. So here at my office, we represent men and women equally, and we truly believe that a child benefits by having both parents in their life consistently and jointly. In polling our male clients and our fo followers, it is abundantly clear that most men are simply uninformed, usually to their detriment. When dads come to see me or they call our office, conversations are almost identical. The dad said something like, I was seeing my child regularly, then we got an argument, now the mom won't let me see my child for whatever reason, or the most typical um, response that I hear from fathers is that, but I'm paying child support, why can't I see my child? So let's start right there with the issue of child support and whether or not child support gets you custody rights. Paying child support does not equal visitation or custody rights. You may be subject to um, child support voluntarily on your own goodwill by mutual agreement with the mother or via court order. Regardless of why you pay child support, um, and I understand when you pay child support, you feel like you should be able to see your child freely, but it does not work like that in the state of Georgia. If you were not married to the child's mother and you still are not married to the mother of the child, 
then you have absolutely no rights until you pursue them through the court system. If you have been to court for child support or you are currently in litigation for child support, you need to understand that the case that you are currently in is simply one that has been filed by the mother or by a third party on behalf of your child. And in that case, if it's a child support case, the only issue is finances and any hopes of custody or visitation will not be addressed. A lot of times my dads, they go to court for child support, fully prepared to give their argument for why they should be able to see their child. And the judge says that is not the issue before the court. So just be mindful, a child support case is not going to get you the custody and visitation rights. Um, a married father simply don't have those rights. Okay, so if you're unmarried to the child's mother, you do not have any rights. Uh, the mother, what that means is the mother of the child has full parental power. This means that she does not have to consult with you about anything whatsoever. Um, she can prevent you from seeing the child. She can deny access to the child's school, deny access to the child's doctor, and anything else that she wants to. And she can change her phone number. She can block your phone number. She can move out of the state. She can move out of the country without any regard or discussion with you and how that affects the relationship that you have um, with your child. So by now, I'm sure some of you may be thinking, but I signed the birth certificate. Well, that doesn't give you custody or visitation rights either. So let's talk about that. And before I get into that, I'm going to remind you guys that I'm live on both Facebook and Instagram right now. So that's why you see me kind of looking back and forth. Instagram um, followers, if you want to see the titles and subheadings that I'm using, hop over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash feral firm. Um, and feel free to ask questions throughout this broadcast um, and I will get to them at the end. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the birth certificate. So I get it, signing the birth certificate seems very official and it seems very responsible because it is. I mean, you're stepping up to the plate on day one. You were there for the birth, you supported her while she pushed, you cut the umbilical cord, you did everything. What else can you do? How official, how more official can you get than signing the birth certificate? Well, what that means is that you've actually acknowledged paternity. Acknowledging paternity means that you are saying that you are the biological father of the child, meaning that you believe that the child was conceived as a result of your sperm. Paternity must be established either by acknowledgement or by genetic DNA testing. So if a mother seeks a child support action against you, it is required um, by the state that she proved paternity. So if you sign the birth certificate, that paternity is not disputed. It is already um, determined. Um, that you're the biological father and that you have a responsibility to provide for the care and maintenance of that child through a child support order. So um, what you really need to be looking for um, fathers is not necessarily the uh, paternity establishment, although that is important. We really need to talk about um, the difference between a biological father and a legal father. Biological fathers are fathers who are genetically related to the child but have no rights to the child. A legal father is a father who is recognized by law to be a legal father and thus that father is entitled to have custody rights and or visitation rights with the child. Legal custody is what you need in order to have the right to be in your child's life. When you have rights, you don't have to ask for permission to see your child. The court gives you those rights to see your child at set times and dates so there is no need um, to feel like you have to beg a mother to see your child. Once you have the court order, there should be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So how do you go about getting the legal custody? In order to be considered a legal father, an unmarried father must file um, to legitimate the minor child by filing what's called a petition to legitimate. However, prior to July 1st, 2016, fathers could sign what's known as an administrative legitimation at the time of birth. And at the same time, they could also could sign for the fraternity, which we just talked about a minute ago. Um, so if you have a, well, let me keep going first. An administrative legitimation does make a father a legal father, but it does not lay out any of the custody specifics as it relates to the physical custody or the visitation. So you would still have to pursue a court action to get those um, things determined. 
So if you have a child who was born prior to July 1st, 2016, you may have signed an administrative legitimation in the hospital. Um, if you did that, then you may just only need to file for the custody visitation determination. So um, let's talk about how you need to, what you need to do to legitimate. So every father uh, should legitimate a child regardless of the relationship with the child's mother. This means that if you and the mother are best friends, if y'all are still dating each other, if y'all live together, if you hate each other, the child still needs to be legitimized so that you are recognized as the legal father. And when you're the legal father, should something happen to you, your child will be able to legally inherit from you. And if something happens to your child, you can legally inherit from your child. And if something happens to the mother, she becomes deceased or becomes um, incapable of taking care of the child, you have standing to legally step in and take over uh, custody of the child. So when filing a petition for legitimation, you need to file in the county where the mother and the child live. You serve the papers to her via sheriff department or private process server. And then in those papers, you have to assert the type of custody that you are seeking. There are two types of custody and legitimation action that you should be mentioning in your, in your petition. Those types of custody are legal custody and physical custody. So legal custody is the legal decision making for the child in categories like school, health care, religion, etc. And physical custody is the one is who the child will physically reside with a majority of the time. You can either petition a court for joint legal custody or sole legal custody, joint physical custody, primary physical custody, or some type of visitation. Both legal and physical custody is determined in a legitimation case. If both parents are decent parents, then joint legal custody is typically just fine. The biggest issue um, in a legitimation um, that we're usually worried about is actually determination of the physical custody. Myself, in the beliefs of the feral farms that children, again, should have equal access to both of their parents. And we encourage mothers and fathers to see the benefit in that. If you really think about it, it really isn't cool to just see your child four or five days a month. And both fathers and mothers need to actively do a better job of wanting to uh, co-parent with each other. Fathers tend to automatically defer to only seeking every other weekend because that's been the norm for years and years and years. But in reality, fathers can do parenting time outside of weekends. And at the end of the day, it's your choice about how much time you want to pursue with your, ch pursue with your child. Uh, we're here to fight for whatever you want. But just know that just because you're a father doesn't mean you only are entitled to weekend visitation. The court uh, requires in every legitimation case that a parenting plan be put into place that lays out all 365 days of the year, and it specifies which parent has the child on each day. The parenting plan is your golden ticket to having access with your child on your court order days. This plan also covers all holidays, and it can also include specific days like parenting time on your child's birthday or on your birthday. It is important not to get thrown into the standard cookie cutter parenting plan. You want something that is customized for you and your family. For example, if your off days are not the traditional um, Saturday and Sunday, your off day may be Monday and Tuesday or Wednesday and Thursday. It would make absolutely no sense to enter a parenting plan that only gives you visitation on the weekend when you work all weekend. So you have to make sure um, if you have a lawyer um, or if you're doing it yourself that you just don't fall into a cookie cutter plan. You need something very specific and tailored um, to your life. And as far as um, weekend parenting and weekday parenting, I think it's very important that um, fathers and mothers both have time during the week because you have two different types of parents during the week and weekend. So if you are just the weekend dad, you're the, the dad who always gets to do the fun stuff. You guys are just hanging out at the house. Um, but it's important to have that um, weekday interaction with the child because that's when a lot of parenting comes in, trying to get the child up in time for school, getting them dressed, getting them breakfast, getting them on the school bus or getting them dropped off in time for school, making sure their homework is done, projects are done, making sure they're getting to um, soccer practice, football practice, etc., getting dinner, putting them to bed. All of that um, usually happens during the week and it would be um, such a misfortune 
if um, some parents never even got to enjoy that part of the process. So in addition to the um, parenting plan that takes place uh, in a legitimation action, the court is also going to um, consider the issue of child support. Now, um, honestly, from what I see and what I've seen over the past several years, this issue alone um, deters men from wanting to pursue the legitimation because people don't like being at work to um, have to pay child support, but it is what it is. And um, it is gonna be required um, to do the legitimation, but whatever the cost is, it's, it's worth it to have this legitimation in place so you have your rights to your child. So first of all, you can be court ordered to pay child support even if you haven't legitimated the child. I talked about that earlier. If there's no court order to pay at the time you file the legitimation, you should expect for child support um, to be addressed. Typically, it's the non-custodial parent who will pay child support. Non-custodial parent means the parent who does not have the primary physical custody. In very rare instances, um, a um, non-custodial, a custodial parent is ordered to pay support. So say, for example, we have a dad who has primary custody. Dad makes $100,000. Mom makes $30,000. Dad makes so much more money and he has custody of the kids, he may be subject to pay some type of child support. Um, and vice versa, if mom makes a lot of money, dad doesn't, mom could still be subject to pay um, child support. Another thing that fathers um, should request in a legitimation is a name change uh, for the minor child. So if the child um, carries the last name of the mother, you can request that the, uh, the last name of the child be changed in your petition for legitimation. You can have, you can request that it be changed completely to your name, or you can request that it be changed in some form of hyphenation to include the mom's name and your name. The court will determine um, if it's in the best interest of the child to have the name changed. So now the question may be, when exactly should you file for the leg legitimation? Well, my position is that you should file um, as soon as possible. Legitimations are not guaranteed contrary to um, popular belief. Um, like I said, we also represent mothers. Um, so sometimes we're on the opposite side of this uh, this action. So you shouldn't assume that just because you file legitimation that it's, it's gonna be granted. Um, fathers who wait years and years um, could be deemed to have waived their opportunity interest to be in their child's life. So when you file, the earlier you file, the better it is for you um, because it shows that you're serious about this and this is something important to you versus when you wait till your child is 12 or 13 years old, the court's looking like, why did you wait over a decade to pursue rights with your child? And depending on the circumstances, the court could very well um, deny your legitimation. I've seen legitimations denied when a child was four. Um, so it's very important um, that you aggressively pursue your rights. If, it, if you do have an older child, and a lot of people say, well, I didn't even know about the legitimation process. This isn't something I knew I had to do. That's why I waited 12 years. There are um, arguments that your attorney can make on your behalf to show that although you didn't file the legitimation, uh, you didn't waive your rights to uh, be in the child's life. So um, file as soon as you can. If you never file, you will never ever have rights to your child. It is simple as that. So now I'm going to, um, that's pretty much my presentation of the information I'm sharing with you today. So now I'm gonna take some questions from you guys. Um, I'll, I see I've already got some popping up, so I'm just gonna go right into them. While I'm answering them, if you have questions, feel free to um, post them. Instagram, you guys can post questions too. I'll just read your questions over here on this screen. Okay. This question is from Sean Barry, what if the man is paying his support and the woman is keeping the child away and they are still going back and forth to court? Um, so Sean, or I'm not saying if I'm saying that right, but Shoni or Sean, uh, child, a lot of people think child support and visitation are related to each other. So if I pay child support, I see the child. If you don't pay your child support, you don't get to see the child. But they're completely um, separate actions. Um, the question is to whether or not the woman is keeping the child away is whether or not dad has primary, I mean, not primary custody, but does he have a legitimation right? If he hasn't legitimated the child, then she's not keeping the child away from anything because he doesn't even have rights to pursue the child. And that's why it's important to actually file this action so you can see the child. If there is a court order in place that gives dad visitation 
or custody time and she's keeping the child away, the appropriate thing to do is going to be to file a um, contempt action to enforce that court order. Okay, I see you came back and said he was granted visitation. So if he was granted visitation, he needs to enforce it. So you may want to, um, not may, you definitely want to go ahead and file contempt and uh, force that parent of time. And moms, for those of you who are tuning in, um, if a dad has court order custody time and visitation time, you do not want to interfere with that because we have had mothers incarcerated um, for that, for doing that. So if they have parenting time, give them their parenting time and don't do things to interfere with it because they pursued their rights um, to do that. This question is from Tamika. What if the father pays child support? The daughter has his last name, but she's not legitimized. How would the father go about that? Um, so Tamika, he needs to file a um, petition in the county of the mother and um, assert what type of uh, custody and visitation rights he wants to the court. Quinton says, what is the general cost for legitimation in Georgia? Well, just to file it with the court, most courts charge anywhere from like 210 to 220 filing fee. The attorney's fees are going to vary which firm, based on which firm you use. Um, our cases here start around 3,000, 3,500 ish and up. Contested custody battles can end up costing you a lot, a lot of money. Some cost a little bit of money. It's just going to depend on the uh, child's mother, how open she is to um, allowing the custody rights and what type of custody you want. If you're going for primary custody, you it's a bigger fight. If you're just seeking visitation, it's not as big of a fight. So it just varies. Uh, you should come in and do a consultation and we can give you a price um, specifically for your case. Um, Jose says, I live in Georgia and my wife lives in Tennessee. Can I file for divorce and custody in Georgia? Um, so Jose, that's going to depend how long your wife has lived in Tennessee. If she lived in Georgia within the last six months, you can file here in Georgia. If she's been in Tennessee for um, longer than six months, and if the kids are in Tennessee, you're going to have to take that up in Tennessee. Um, Michael says, is Georgia a mother state? Um, and I'm assuming do you mean we favor mothers here? Um, no, our statute specifically says that our law doesn't favor a mother or, the or a father. We look to what's going to be in the best interest of the child. However, as we go more into the future, uh, we see more courts granting physical, joint physical custody or giving primary custody to dads. The times are definitely changing. And so it's very difficult um, for a mother to just feel comfortable um, with the assumption that she's automatically going to get custody because a lot of times dads are walking away with custody. Stephanie says, what do you do if the father is out of state? Um, Stephanie, uh, only the father can file a legitimation. Mothers cannot file legitimations on behalf of the father. It is the father's right to pursue. And if he chooses not to pursue it, then there's nothing you can do about that. However, if you're needing child support, you can file with the Department of Human Services, Child Support Services, and have your case transferred to the state where the father is, and that state can get you the child support that you need. Uh, okay, Brian. Okay, so Brian's just voicing his opinion um, here. He's basically saying, baby daddies have duties but no rights by law. Kind of odd that fathers have to fight for the right to be a father, but society blames him if he doesn't. I get it, Brian. I get it. And that's why I do things like this, to just to make sure you guys know your rights, because there's no point in having duties but not having rights. So, you know, you can get these rights on day one. We met with a guy yesterday. His baby not even born yet. And uh, on day one, when that baby come out, we file in papers. So it's up to you to uh, pursue that. Christopher says, is the income deduction order, income deduction from an employer for a new case normal in Georgia? Yes, it is. And a lot of people don't like income deduction orders because it takes it out of your check. But honestly, that's the safest way to go. You don't even have to deal with the mama. You don't have to think about it. It comes out of your check before you even see it, just like taxes. And you just know you stay current. Quentin says, my son is eight years old and I have child support on my son. What needs to be done to gain rights? Quentin, you need to file a petition for legitimation um, very soon because he's eight. 
uh, what do you have to do? Uh, I'm not sure when you tuned in, but you probably want to replay this when it reposts, but it tells you that you need to file in the county where the mom lives. Okay, I think I got all my questions. No, I did not. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Okay. It seems as if a father can force the mother to let him be in the child's life through legitimation, but a mother can't force a father to be in the child's life through any avenue. Yes, that is absolutely correct. So um, visitation is a right, not an obligation. So, you know, you can do it or you, or you won't. The mother's avenue is child support. You know, although we want fathers to be present um, physically, not just financially, you can't force them to be present physically, but you can force them to be present financially. So you may want to pursue a child support action. Michael says, my child's mother took me away from my child 10 years. And as of now, I want to file for legitimation now that I know where my child's mother live. And now how can that work? Because now I'm feeling like Tyrese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tyrese is really feeling it. I, I actually was reading about his case this morning. Um, so you definitely, I hope she didn't take the child away from you 10 years ago, because if so, you've waited a really, really long time to pursue this. But if the child if the child is like 10 and then she just disappeared, then yeah, you should go ahead and um, file the legitimation ASAP. You do have to know where she lives. So it looks like you know that information. So it looks like you're going to be qualified to um, be able to file a petition. Tawana says, is there anything I can do if the father wants nothing to do with the child, but I want my son to have his parental paternal last name? There's already a child support order, but he hasn't done the medical part yet. Um, you know, unfortunately, Tawana, uh, some dads and moms don't want to be a part of their child's life. And there's nothing we can do um, to force that. Again, you can get child support. Um, if you want to change his last name, um, I find it interesting that you want to do that, given that his dad doesn't want anything to do with him and you want him to carry on his father's name, who he may never know. I would definitely think twice before I do that. But you can always file a petition for a name change um, in the county of your residence and uh, change the name that way. But I would definitely think strongly about that before you do it, because if he chooses not to be in your son's life, your son is always going to ask why he has his last name. If my husband stays in Alabama and I stay in Georgia, would I be able to file for divorce in Georgia? Depends on how long he's been in Alabama. If you guys don't have any kids, no property, no child support to discuss, no division of assets, you can just get a straight uncontested divorce here in Georgia. Um, but the courts don't have jurisdiction over him if you guys need child support um, or division of property and stuff like that. So it depends on how long he's been there. Clint says, so if the mother agrees to legitimation of your child, is there a need for an attorney at all? Um, Clint, yes, I'm gonna say yes, because so what a lot of people do is that they have these agreements and they like, oh yeah, you know, they got it off the internet and they signed it and it looks pretty good until it doesn't look good when you start reading it and realizing um, everything that it left out or considerations um, that it didn't consider. So if you guys have a consent, what you're going to want to do is probably at least consult with an attorney, have an attorney review your consent agreement to make sure it absolutely covers everything that needs to be covered. Number one, if it's not right, the court won't sign off on it. Number two, once it's done, it's done. And you want to just make sure everything is done um, right the first time. So we always welcome mothers and fathers to come into our office for a meeting. We'll review the documents, make suggested changes, etc., and give you the guidance on what else you need to do to get the case finalized. Tabitha says, if the if the father is on child support but he's not paying, what should you do? Um, you should file a contempt action um, immediately. If he's more than thirty days behind, you need to um, file a contempt action to enforce it. What information do you need from the father in order to start the child support process? You don't need anything from the father. You just need his name and address. Clarence says, I had a case and I didn't have time to get a lawyer and I was tested to see if the kid is mine. Is that okay? 
Um, absolutely, you always um, request DNA tests anytime there's a possibility that the child may not be yours. Um, it sounds like that may be for a child support case, though, probably, because the um, state does give you the opportunity to take a DNA test when they're pursuing child support. Um, if your case is not over, you may want to think about getting a lawyer. People who don't have lawyers lose. Quentin says, do they have hard luck acceptance for low income dads who can't afford filing? Does legal aid handle cases like this? Um, yes, you can file a um, pauper's affidavit with the superior court and they ask you to fill out your financial information, your income, your bills. And if they approve you, then you don't have to pay a filing fee. And yes, legal aid does handle cases like this if you qualify, if you meet the financial requirements. Lainey says, what about fathers who don't pay the full amount of child support besides enforcement from child support services? What else can be done? Um, you should file a, a private enforcement action. Um, private enforcement actions, you can usually get lump sum payments um, anytime you start requesting incarceration. A lot of people um, make the payment once they go to jail, surprisingly. Nigel says, I need a consultation. Where can I find you guys? Nigel, um, our phone number is 678-973-2803. You can find us at theferalfirm.com. You're into our page right now if you're watching this broadcast. So you can just click the page and they'll have all our contact information. You can book an appointment online or you can call the office. Uh, my ex-husband is on child support and he's paid nothing. 40000 in back pay. How do I find him? Um, Tracy, uh, if you don't know where he is, it's going to be very difficult to enforce this. So you may want to um, hire a private investigator or check with some mutual friends on Facebook and just see if you can track him down. Um, I have a friend whose baby father took their son and refuses to give him back. No custody or child support in place. The police have refused to make the father return the child. <laughs> what can the mother do? Isn't that kidnapping if he has no rights? Um, I don't know where your friend lives or what police she dealing with, but yes, this this is all of that um, criminal. So dads, don't take kids that you don't have legal rights to. That is a criminal offense. Kidnapping is a felony, so that means you do jail time for that. Um, so Rosalind, I hope your friend has a job and maybe can afford an attorney because that is completely um, unacceptable for her to be dealing with that. And she need to go get her kids back. I don't know what's stopping her, but she need to go right over there and knock on the door and wrap them up. That's what I would do. Um, Asia, if a father abandons children during the marriage, does custody go to the mother by default? Nope, not per se. During a divorce, the court has to consider the issues of custody, what's going to be in the best interest of the child. That's most certainly an argument you can make, but any man that's married to the mother, he's already a legal and legitimate father, and he has equal rights as you um, as it stands right now until you get a divorce and say something different. Does filing an abandonment warrant work? Yes, it does. Um, file in the county of the abandonment, show up. Uh, it's, it's very easy to beat though, because all you have to do is make a payment um, before the court date and then the abandonment will pretty much get dismissed. Karen, my child has not been born yet. Father is threatening to sign over rights. Does the state of Georgia allow this voluntarily? Karen, he's probably um, threatening to sign over his rights because he's thinking that will prevent him from paying child support. But you actually still have to pay child support even if you terminate your rights because it's your kid and you have the responsibility. So if the baby's not adopted by somebody else, he'll still pay child support even if you terminate his rights. That may change his mind right there. Lynn says, my son's father took him when he went to visit for the summer and he refused to return him. He came to Georgia and filed for temporary custody and they gave him it because my son is 14. So they let him stay because he said he wanted to stay with dad. I had a court order from Ohio when he tried to get custody before and they only gave him visitation. Can I do anything? Um, Lane, if there's temporary custody, that means it's just a temporary order. So that means your case is not over yet. Um, it sounds like you may have um, possible jurisdiction issues. 14 year olds do have the right to do an affidavit of election to decide who they want to live with, but that's not an end all be all. The court still has to make a determination of whether or not it's in the best interest of your son to actually um, reside with his father 
versus you. Um, Ex-wife is a custodial parent. She's blocking me from activities in the child's life. Can she le legally do that, especially with school activities? Nigel, if you guys were married, you're already a legal father. So your divorce decree is going to actually determine um, what you would be um, entitled to. So if you, if you have joint legal custody, then you should um, be um, granted access to the child's life. And so if she's not doing that, you want to read over your decree, read over your parenting plan. If she's not doing it, you're going to want to file a contempt action. Does marriage after the birth of your child legitimate you? Yes, it does, Clint. And that's, you know, so if you marry the child's mother, the legitimation becomes automatic. Asia says, I read somewhere that a father abandons the marriage. The kids in custody goes to the mother by default. Custody is never, ever by default, ever. Does Georgia allow back child support? Back child support can only be granted if there was a previous child support order and in very other rare instances that I have not seen anyone meet statutorily, so I won't even go into that. Um, so, Joanne is talking about child support services and trying to reach them. I don't know. I don't fool with them. Um, Good luck. They're trying to spend your license because you must be behind on your child support. So what you want to do is make a lump sum payment to free up your license, and that should um, resolve that. Okay, so I think I have, no, I have not. Another question just came up. Michelle says, if I have filed a contempt before and my ex-husband continues the same behavior and I'm the one who has filed contempt again, he hasn't seen the kids since the last time he he was smoking while they were in his custody and my youngest is asthmatic. Well, I look bad in court because he hasn't seen them, not that he has. I've done this before and the judge ruled in my favor because he didn't want to take a drug test. Um, Michelle, it depends on what your end result is. If you're trying to take his custody, um, keep filing. You know, if he's not trying to be in their life, then you don't want to be subject to him waking up one weekend and saying, hey, I want to see the kids and he hasn't seen them in two years. But because a piece of paper says he has rights to the child, children, he can just come and pick them up. So always file contempt. Any, anytime somebody is not violating, um, anytime somebody is violating a court order, just file the contempt action. Um, and if they're in contempt, it will always go in your favor. And if you have to hire, uh, hire an attorney, a lot of times they will uh, make him reimburse you for your fees. It's not guaranteed, but most of the times they do. Um, what is the process of getting legitimation acknowledged if you got married after the child is born? You don't have to do anything else, Chris. You're married. It's automatic. You guys have equal parenting rights. Um, the only time custody will come up again is if you guys decide to get divorced. Okay, so I think I have, let me check Instagram. No questions over here on Instagram. Okay, Facebookers. Okay, so. Our number is 678-973-2803. Uh, um, okay, I have some more questions popping up. You guys always do this to me. Okay, let me go back and answer because that's, I just feel like I have to answer these questions. Um, so start typing. Be typing fast because once I hit these other ones, uh, I'm going to sign off. Okay. What happens if a father files for joint and stop coming, then the mom files for full custody and he doesn't show up for court during, for court during trial? What happens with visitation later in life? The baby is one. He's not on birth certificate. He had a 99.9% .9 DNA test and he has back support of 3,500. Um, so if a dad files for joint custody and he's no longer exercising his custody rights um, and mom files for full custody, I would suspect that that custody will be modified to the mother. Um, even if a mother has full custody, which really isn't a term here in Georgia, it's primary custody, the dad still has his visitation rights. Um, so as long as those visitation rights are on paper, he is always able to come back and do those rights. So if you have a concern with it, then you're going to want to modify the visitation. Um, he doesn't have to be on the birth certificate. And 3500 he will have to pay all of that. Do we charge for consults here? Yes, we do charge for the for consultations. They are $150 currently. 
And so you guys can call um, 678-973-2803, or you can go on our um, webpage, which is the, uh, not the Feral Farm, it's feralfarm.com, and you can book online uh, for your appointment. Uh, we are currently taking cases, and I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, we're going to be going live every Friday this month, except for the Friday after Thanksgiving. So make sure you uh, follow our pages so you don't miss it. I'm planning to do 12 o'clock for each of them, but I may throw on an evening appointment for some of you guys. I know y'all at work right now and it's difficult trying to trying to listen and everything. So I may do an evening when I can't promise it because I got kids too. What? Let me know. Oh. Yeah, let me know if you guys are interested um, in something like that. And if that'll work for you, then I'll make sure I get me a babysitter and um, everything so I can be here late to talk to you guys um, one night. I hope you guys have a um, no. <laughs> I hope you guys have a, a great weekend, and I will see you guys next week.